A recent conversation with a high quality contractor reminded me that every piece of equipment has its limits. Like the fact a half ton truck can only pull so much weight, or one man can only handle so many movie award shows. A permanent split capacitor motor can only handle so much static pressure. So herein lies the problem. How can a motor overcome more static pressure than it's designed for? Welcome back, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week I'm gonna talk about available static pressure. The conversation I was having at the start of this video with a HVAC contractor was centered around figuring the friction loss for an existing duct system that was involved with a replacement unit. For those seasoned system designers, you should know that this number should be calculated way before the system replacements actually happened. And in order to calculate the friction loss, you need to know the available static pressure plus the total equivalent length of the longest duct run. That's supply plus return. For this video, I'm gonna focus on available static pressure. Now, most technicians have actually seen the maximum external static pressure on those tags they typically look at on the furnace, right? It's not just model and serial number and temperature rise on that thing. Maximum external static pressure is listed. And usually for a PSC style motor, maximum is at 0.5 inches of water column. And keep in mind, system designers usually peer over this information during the design process, long before the system's been installed or the homeowner makes that final payment. Unfortunately, it seems these days, maximum external static pressure tends to get overlooked. Keep in mind, this is the most pressure that motor can overcome without seeing other problems in the system like frozen A coils due to low volume of air or cubic feet per minute. Also, when designing the system, it's important to be able to deliver the volume of air that you need on a medium speed. Keep in mind, if you're a technician, you're gonna to wanna to be able to turn the airflow up or down after the system's been installed in order to balance the system out. Okay, so 0.50 inches of water column. It sounds like a lot of pressure to go around, right? You have to realize this is not what's left to design around. This is what the maximum is before you start deducting all of the different devices you add to the airstream. As an example, let's say we added a high efficient four or five inch pleated filter to the unit. Those filters actually have a much lower pressure drop based on its one inch counterpart at the same MERV rating. Even still, it is quite possible to have a 0.15 to 0.20 pressure loss for a MERV 8 or MERV 11 air filter. So in this example that I had at the beginning of the conversation here, I started with 0.50 and now I'm gonna deduct 0.20 from what I started with. Keep in mind, this isn't the only restriction we add to a duct system, especially for a furnace. Hey, there's duct work there, and we're gonna insulate it, so why not put an A-coil on, right? That is not shipped with the furnace, and we're gonna to have to deduct for that pressure loss. That coil actually has a 0.2 to 0.25 pressure loss, typically, if it's sized right based on the volume of air you wanna put through it. That same physical coil with more volume of air would then have more pressure loss. So in this example, let's say it was sized right and we had a 0.25 pressure loss for that A-coil. So we deduct that from what we started with. Oh, and don't forget about a balancing damper, a return grill, and a supply register. Those are all 0.03 a piece. If you don't have something very restrictive, it's just a standard right in manual D. So the longest duct run, when you add one of each of those up is 0.09, and we deduct that from what we started with. Now, even the greenest of technicians can look down and see what that math leaves, a negative available static pressure. This means it doesn't matter how much duct work you add to the unit, how big or small that duct work is, the motor cannot overcome that restriction in the system. There's too much pressure loss. Unfortunately, at this point, the system's already installed, providing that much needed heat we needed over the weekend. So when the technician shows up for that noisy unit that's not keeping up, they just assume it's undersized ductwork. And unfortunately, now modifications are needed. This is usually quite the conversation to have with a homeowner. Do you think they're gonna pay for it? Mm, good luck with that one. So a few things I want you to come away with here if you're a technician. Number one, this system problem could have been avoided way early in the process if it was designed using the right friction loss and coming up with available static pressure. Also on startup, you really could have found this problem out immediately if you would measure static pressure and volume of air. The problem is not always that the duct works too small. I'm willing to bet it was designed around the wrong friction rate or without a friction rate, right? 
Now I know you're thinking ECM motors, electronically commutated motors, can overcome a much higher static pressure and deliver the volume of air that we're looking for. Keep in mind, you wanna keep that maximum at 0.80 or less with ECM motors, but it's not a silver bullet. As we ramp up that motor to deliver the volume of air with the higher static pressure, we actually will use more and more electricity all the way until the point something fails. So think about these things before you set your equipment and your installation up for failure. Remember, a PSC motor can only overcome so much static pressure, 0.50 maximum. Don't go above 0.7 to 0.8 for an ECM motor. And a man only has one movie award show limit per year. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.